Are we hopping on <clears throat> Discord? In a sec. Okay. Your host, Bobby Chu, and my co-host, Masei Seki. Hello. This is going to be great. <laughs> uh, let's show the... Let's show the subject for today. Let's do that first, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the subject, and you can go to 90 Minute Art Challenge on Tumblr to find this, the subject. And of course, uh, for those of you that, I don't know, maybe don't know who this is, this is Lily Collins, um, star of Emily in Paris or something like that. Yeah. That's a fun show. I watched that show. It was nice. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so we're going to be doing this challenge. Now, uh, I was asking a little friend of ours, what rating would we give this challenge? And I was like thinking, yeah, each time maybe we can ask our little um, bunny friend, uh, what rating would they give this challenge? Bunny Sorcerer says, oh, oh, six. six. Ouch. That's kind of not so hot. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Bunny Wizard is, is kind of um, tough. But yeah. what we did for this challenge, what Masei and I did for this challenge was we did Wouter Tulp's um, art workout you know, p digital painting workout where we would have to uh, keep changing the hues, keep changing the saturation and full opacity and paint this portrait. That was extremely tough because then we had to also keep in mind um, the tonality of those colors because as you start changing hues, you start changing the tone. So it's a mm -hmm. very, very good exercise on really concentrating on the values of uh, your subject and um, being kind of freed to do all sorts of different hues and saturations and all sorts of fun stuff. Right? That was yeah. really great. I love yeah. that part of it. It was a good challenge for sure. Yes, yes. So we started off with a blank background and away we went um now come on bunny sorcerer okay if we you know what do you think about this challenge how we did this challenge it, it wasn't straight on it was strictly crazy hues crazy saturation <laughs> yeah oh right. not bad not bad <laughs> bunny sorcerer is uh you know giving us a little slack here yeah it's great the bunny has spoken. I'm curious to see what he thinks of the 10. I know. I know. I'm kind of scared. Yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Masei? I, I got up real early in the morning, had nothing to do. And I was like, bunny sorcerer ratings. I love that. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the other thing about this uh, stream is that you can also participate by uploading your entries onto Instagram and you can just hashtag it 90 minute art challenge, right? And mm -hmm. uh, here you can kind of see all of the amazing entries that have come in and a bunch of people already did this one, you know, because they got yeah. it on um, Tumblr. So here's a couple you know that was really Ooh. nice this was a uh, this is one from before the color palette yeah. was the main subject there wonderful wow very uh a lot done in 90 minutes that's fantastic mm -hmm. now this one all right Ooh, like that, that one was challenging we did that one in black and white and that was another yeah. interesting challenge and oh i like that one right different style mm -hmm. art of gabs the caricature way to go this is the way that we did the last challenge which was quite yeah. difficult in its own way mm -hmm. pure black and white yes yes 100 percent opacity 100 percent flow and then we have one here as well oh wow interesting it's very interesting seeing all the different mm -hmm. takes 
Yeah, Love keep it. them coming in. Keep them coming yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, so this is how we started. You started with blue, I started with yellow. <laughs> Yeah, using colors that I don't normally use, especially like so, with such full saturation. Hundred percent it, opacity yeah. too is like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of jarring. Yeah, but it really um, made me think, uh, like, which colors and how much saturation, like, what value will it give me? So that was pretty cool to kind of like slow down and think about those things. Absolutely. Um, I did want to mention our Discord group. Why don't we jump in there now? Is that cool? Yeah. I'll yeah, show where good. the Discord thing is. Hey, Discord people. All right. So, um, let's say you could just mute Zoom okay. and then we'll go right in there. All right. So this is our Discord group. Uh, you know, the, this is the Lightbox Expo Discord ser uh, server. Mm -hmm. And so okay. every week, twice a week, we mm -hmm. come in here and Sorry, we stream. Sorry, one second. All right. So the other thing I want to mention here is what program is this? Because actually, Masei and I are painting together at the exact same time, which has been absolutely fantastic because then um, we can see how each other paints. And it's quite motivating when you have somebody else painting with you, you know, because they're there painting. You're not going to get up and, you know, there's been plenty of times, Masei, where we're painting together and I thought of getting up, but then I didn't <laughs> because we're painting together. Are you, are you there, Masse? Or are you having a little bit of difficulty? I will, let me see here. I'll hop back onto Zoom and see how you're doing there. Hey, can you hear me now? We should have did this earlier, huh, Masay? Are you still on Zoom? No? Okay, well, I will continue on as Masay gets her... Can, uh, can people hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I can yes. Oh. Yes, we can. Bobby, I don't think I can hear you. Oh, maybe my settings. Yes. Sorry, I had pushed ah. the talk. <laughs> okay, I was like, oh, no, I no one can hear me. But I guess that's the opposite. <laughs> that's how you know this is live, everybody. However, <laughs> time is still ticking. So we have 90 mm -hmm. minutes to finish this uh, challenge here. This is a difficult challenge. Um, yeah, so you can join everybody in Discord check this out because you can also paint with everybody let me see here you know you could paint by yourself on your own window or you can paint with the group right which is quite fun because then oh, you get to awesome. see a whole bunch of different people painting and drawing we'll come back to you guys we'll come back to yeah. you guys um oh magma too Yes, yes. So that's the program that we're using. You can go to magmastudio.io and uh, use this program as well for free. Uh, you can also see here on the right hand side that Masay and I, we do have these custom brushes. That is coming soon. That is coming this month, actually. I was saying next month, last time, but that's coming this month uh, to Magma Studio, to the pro version. And what else do we have Hello, to talk about? I have a question. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, sorry, how can I find the address of site? Address of the which? Sorry? Um, Magma Studio, now you are drawing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You see in the top left-hand corner, it actually says in the screen, it says magmastudio.io. And you could just uh -huh, go straight okay. to that and um, start painting right away. Use Chrome. Yeah, yeah. Use Google Chrome because it's mm -hmm. built for Google Chrome. Okay, not Safari. Yes. 
Uh, it's a very little. I can't see it. I will um, help. No worries. <laughs> you can go on, Bobby. Okay. Maybe uh, somebody can drop in the link for this person that is uh, a little lost. All right. Yeah, you'll you'll have your own um, custom board every time you open Magma. And then you can share that link and then share it with other people and draw at the same time. So this is our own board that we pre-recorded. Perfect. Thank you so much, Marseille. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the other thing I want to mention is Slido. So we have some questions coming in from slido.com. Hashtag ChewStream. You can see everything on the bottom of the screen here, by the way. All right, so um, now we have over 200 people watching right stinking now, which is pretty freaking ah, awesome. That's so awesome. I want to give some shout outs, right? First shout out goes yeah. to CJ Ellison, one of the hardcore 90 minute art challenge peoples uh, from Chicago. And then we have Lena from uh, Germany. We got Michigan over here, South Carolina, Philippines, Earth, Hamburg, Germany, Sweden, <laughs> Germany, Brooklyn, Peru, India, Netherlands, Ireland, France, everywhere, Transylvania, uh, yeah, a whole bunch. Yeah. Venezuela, currently in Florida, and there you go. A whole uh, bunch. All over the world. Yeah. Welcome. It's just getting bigger and bigger. It's, yeah. You know, it's great because now I feel more and more, um, kind of like responsibility to keep going <laughs> that's true right it's nice it feels like we're all in it together now yes yes and it's so awesome because like we've talked about this before that um we could already kind of feel the improvements going on mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. starting to think differently things are coming a little quicker it's great yeah and like seeing everyone's examples seeing how amazing they are it's like making me sweat a bit <laughs> i, I gotta mm -hmm. up my up my game a bit more yes and i would love to get some guest artists to do these challenges with us Masse. Mm -hmm. like three mm -hmm. people um to really make us sweat yeah oh oh pressure's on <laughs> yeah especially like i would love to just do stuff with people that do things do subjects that we are not used to i don't know how mm. you feel about that but um i kind of it's a good to... challenge for sure <laughs> yeah like spaceships or something with david levy and then he he does like a fleet and we do like one <laughs> <laughs> like a little spaceship mm -hmm. yeah that will definitely be, be a challenge but you know i'm i'm down for that for sure now it's nice to switch it up I love, you know, I love that about you. So I'm, I'm the exact same way. Go straight into the fire, you know, let's do this. Yeah. Uh, when you're painting here, it's interesting because we start to take two very different approaches. You notice that? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like the shapes that you're creating with the colors. You're almost like forcing yourself to um, go about it the hard way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> yeah, I feel like it because, you know, mine still represent certain tones that I see. But you'll mm. stop like halfway and then you'll just, you know, it's just like a patch of tone there. And then you switch the color and you do another patch of tone, especially like later on. Yeah, uh, I think um, I was making a conscious effort uh, um, whenever I had a different value within that darker value group. I switched the um, the color wheel just so that um, it forces me to readjust the saturation and the uh, value of it to get, you know, within that same um, range, so yeah, that uh, then I can learn like like red saturation is very different from like purple saturation because one can be darker than the other even though it sits exactly in that same square. So it was it was really interesting. For 
for people that try this exercise that Missy and I are doing, um, you know, 100% opacity, this was extra challenging with this subject because, mm. you know, um, a lot of times subtleties in a woman's face is what kind of we typically say contributes to the beauty. Right. Mm -hmm. And you look at her cheeks, you look at her forehead and things like that. There's so many subtleties that are happening. Right. And we're doing a hundred percent opacity and changing the colors constantly. Yeah. Right. That it's, got, that it's got way more challenging. Uh huh. Finding that balance. It's like trying to juggle like five things at the same time. Oh, totally which is why I guess Bunny Sorcerer gave us a, a little bit of a higher rating for this one. Yeah, make, makes me feel a bit more accomplished finishing yes. this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, uh, let's go to a question in Slido, and then we'll hop over to uh, the Discord group and see if anybody has any questions or wants to talk over there. All right. Absolutely. So this question is... Um, so weird okay so they they all say to me but you know we could definitely talk about this yeah uh, for sure. bobby when you injured your shoulder did did you suffer or did your dexterity suffer do you think your dexterity is now better or worse than before the injury um dexterity definitely suffered i couldn't draw over like if I drew for two and a half hours, I would be in pain for the next three days. That's how bad it was at the worst. Um, is it is this like even after you were, like I guess quote unquote healed or better? No, this was like at the worst. Uh, before you joined the studio, Masse, uh, mm. I would wear a brace like all the time, every stinking day. <laughs> Man yeah you can't go down that path you know you got to figure it out and unfortunately and kind of fortunately the best way to get out of a lot of this stuff is from exercise true so then you Makes have sense. to exercise um but yeah now my dexterity it's like better and worse you know, like there's some parts <laughs> that got worse and some parts that got way better. Uh, some parts that got extremely flexible, which is interesting hey. to say, because there would be parts that were jammed and I keep trying to, <laughs> you know, stretch, stretch, stretch. But then mm. the part that's jammed is not stretching. It's another part that keeps stretching and more and more and more and more until it's like super flexible. Oh, wow. Right? But the other part is still jammed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what one part is got better, but the part that you're focusing on, not, not so much. Right, right. So you you do a lot of um, stretches and exercises. Because I have and, to. Yeah, I feel and like you see, I have to. And do you see someone for that? Normally, I go to physio um, regularly oh, yeah. because. There's all sorts of problems. Like, one, one part of it. Whoa, hello. All right, Discord peoples, just make sure that your mics are, are on mute, if you don't mind, uh, if you're not talking. Um, but yeah, I guess you definitely don't want to get to the point where you have to see a professional. So just maintaining your body. I, I'm kind of getting to the point where I want to see someone but I feel like I I'm still at that stage where if I take care of my body a bit more it'll be better just because uh quarantine so normally I, I'm a pretty active person like I I go for jogs I go I, I play ultimate frisbee and I go rock climbing but now that everything is kind of like shut down again uh I've been just sitting every single day and it's crazy because like all my life I've done sports and now that I've stopped like my knee joints hurt my shoulder starting to hurt my my neck was hurting this week so yeah it just shows the importance of uh moving your body around 
So yeah, I got to get back into it. But it's harder because, you know, it's getting colder and less motivation. <laughs> you know, yoga. Mm, mm -hmm. I think I think that's the best thing. Yoga and your diet, of course, like that plays a huge part in my health is like um I don't know what the heck, like I can't eat as much like corn-based things anymore. You know, like oh. uh yeah or my i don't know like my muscles and everything they're just not as as healthy or something i don't recoup as quickly i don't mm -hmm. i'm not as flexible um yeah like flour based things corn based things uh yeah i noticed that yeah um, I, I had this conversation with my boyfriend about um, exercising and so there was a time when the climbing gym opened again and then after a four month break we w we both went and then the first week that we were there we were just like struggling so hard and then there was another time when there was like a couple weeks that we didn't go and we went and we just felt like we were beginners again and it's we were just saying like oh consistency is pretty key and as I was thinking about that, I was kind of thinking like art's kind of the same. If I don't do a certain thing, when I get back to it, I think like, oh, I've done this before. Like I could easily do it again. But then when I do it, um, I, I struggle and I feel like, a, you know, this is new to me and I feel like a beginner. So um, I guess my point is, uh, you know, consistency is pretty uh, important when it comes to uh drilling something in to your skills totally i was yeah. thinking the same thing as you were talking about rock climbing and stuff uh, i was like yeah <laughs> this is a workout you know mm -hmm. and that's one of the coolest and like biggest headaches about art is that it is so elusive right mm -hmm. if you don't pay attention if you don't keep on it it goes away a little bit you, you get yeah. rusty you do um, yeah. yeah which is also why I love it because it <laughs> is so elusive you got to keep on uh -huh. it. but on the flip side you, you know like we've been doing these streams twice a week right we're doing these streams twice a week every uh, Monday and Thursday and you know come do this with us because when you do this regularly man things things start clicking way quicker mm -hmm. right you start to see things more vividly before putting them down you can visualize yeah. things you can plan things out much easier yeah just just the action of being there and painting it becomes a lot easier as time goes on and just doing this one exercise i learned stuff imagine mm -hmm. You know, I just like think, imagine if I did this like 20 times, mm. right? I, I would guess so much better. Anybody would guess so much better. Yeah. And I, I guess that's what's great about Wilder's class is like he, you start from the very beginning and then you kind of like progress and everything that you learned before that, like all adds up. And because it's an, like, I mean, you could make it an everyday thing because it's, uh, 90 days was it 60 something yeah 60 days yeah so i think people who are able to complete that will come out you know shining oh like like a little hulk um <laughs> it's like there's before and after people should do like a before and after you know with router mm. take an insanely difficult painting paint it mm -hmm. up you know, do like 90 minutes, paint it up, and then do Vouter's workout, entire workout, and then paint that painting again. 90 days will transform your life. I'm like, mm -hmm. or 60 something days. Yeah, even less. You got two months. <laughs> uh, you definitely feel it, I guarantee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is really cool. I love how you're starting here. You know, mine, I really, actually, I remember just hating this because mine looks <laughs> so simple and just so generic. Like I almost 
those eyes feel like almost like line drawings right and yours talks more of like shadow and light yeah i think and it was the most difficult part was um i wanted to make warm parts warm but i i wanted to consciously do the opposite so that, that it forces me to look at it from a different perspective. You know what I want to do here? I want to make that cheek back to blue because it's so like jarring to have that <laughs> cheek a different color than, see, here I go. I knew it. There you go, Bobby. Do it. It looks weird. Paint it out. Hey, we're allowed, to, we're allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> well, that's the, in, the other thing about these videos, everybody, is that this is just raw recording. We want it to feel exactly like, you know, you're in the gym, you're doing the exercises with the trainer, and we're doing the exercise with you. You know, mm -hmm. our breaks, our mistakes, everything's in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see us struggle. <laughs> Uh, struggle with us yes uh, now let's check out i'd love to check out how the discord peoples are um struggling right now yeah they're coming for you <laughs> that sounds very like threatening <laughs> but that's fantastic oh, nice. oh cool look han is doing the exercise that we're doing Noah, uh, boom. I love it. Beautiful. There's a lot of really nice ones here. Mm -hmm. Great job. You're great. Since since we're on Discord, if anyone has a question, we can hop on. Thank you. Thanks, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> I did mention that before. Hello. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> Hi, nervous. How are you? <laughs> well, my name is Sophie, but I'm nervous. I I want to know how the um, uh, how I know <laughs> how it how works the the um the industry like um especially in in <laughs> no, <laughs> no problem <laughs> I, I i just don't understand how the industry works like um if like how is divided in 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 the in jobs i don't know if i explain it well oh in the different jobs that you can kind of have in the industry yeah but i don't understand very well like it, what is like a concept artist or what is um <laughs> A visual development divided and oh, okay. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, visual development <laughs> and concept art, Masay. I feel like um, concept art is a sect of visual development. Like visual development <laughs> is the bigger group and concept art is a portion of that group because there's visual development where you're doing kind of like key frames. Right, so you're not designing mm -hmm. the characters per se, but you're designing the scene. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Musse? Yeah. Like, I don't consider that as much concept art. I guess it is kind of, it's a I, difficult one. Yeah, I, to me, concept art, I guess the word visual development is used, is used more in like the animation industry and mm -hmm. concept art it 
to me, concept art is like the big umbrella and then visual development is like another way of saying concept art. But yeah, I know what you mean. Like concept art kind of like is almost everything where... Also, if you have a, a bad painting that you did really quick, that's concept art. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you concept. call it yeah. <laughs> oh mm -hmm. yeah well this is in my portfolio this is just concept art though mm -hmm. for nothing but <laughs> <laughs> um i guess to uh i guess the way it works is people are generally divided in the company right into like visual development artists, which is also separated from character design sometimes. Yeah. yeah, you know, it is a big, like, it depends, I think. You know, different studios say different things. Mm -hmm. Some some studios don't even say concept art, especially like in animation, I want to say. Mm -hmm. you're, mm -hmm. you're very right. I, when I yeah. think of concept art, Masei, I think of like, mostly games. Yeah. That's what the game I'm thinking industry. of. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and of course, like, visual development also includes all these, like, all these other things, like um, those design packs that people have to mm -hmm. make. It's almost mm -hmm. like the Bible to those designs that all the different mm -hmm. departments that need it get. Uh, so that everybody stays on the same path. Mm -hmm. Not my favorite thing. I, I don't know if I've even done <laughs> one of those before. You haven't, right? Yeah. You were no, maybe, maybe in school. I don't but... know. So I guess some people do like that stuff, maybe, but mm -hmm. not me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that answered your question, so. <laughs> probably, didn't, uh, probably didn't answer it very well. Um, yeah. But I guess every every studio is definitely different. Our our studio is very different from I don't know, Disney or like Pixar. Uh, obviously, because we're a, a freelance studio. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like producer as well. Like, what does a producer do? You know, you have so many people sometimes as producers, executive producer, producer. You know, if you if you are um, kind of like the person that helps the the crew, the director get the things that they need to get this stuff done, makes those things happen, finds those locations, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you're a producer. If you maybe um, came up with the concept, right? But you're not like maybe, yeah, you, you came up with the original concept, like Nico and the Sword of Light for us, um, for like Kay and I, we came up with the concept with uh, Jim and Adam, and we're all listed as executive producers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's just because you are the one that found this book called Shrek and you brought mm -hmm. it to DreamWorks and now you're a producer. Now you're like one of the biggest freaking producers, perhaps. Oh. Who knows? I think I want to say maybe that was, no, I don't want to get it wrong. But I, <laughs> yeah, you know, there's maybe you're the person that made the deal that got that actor to be a part of this show. Boom, you're a producer, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's so, yeah, it's so cloudy, some of these definitions. Yeah. Um, yeah, any other questions in Discord? Any other, anybody else want to? Hello. 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 Hi. <laughs> um, I, have, I have a question. Sure. Our life drawn teacher just sent us a, a, a you have to draw animals or pets, but I don't have a pet. So I'm looking to know if there's any good references in here, like videos to draw animals. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I would go to Netflix. Mm -hmm. Nature documentaries. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think of that. 
Yeah. Yeah. But it's pets. Oh, I'm talking about the pet tiger. Well, shoot. I'm talking about the pet tiger. There's, there's actually <laughs> plenty of, there's also documentaries with pets and stuff. Yeah, there's like dogs and cats. Yeah. I think I saw a couple on Netflix. Um, there's YouTubers who, you know, have just cat videos or dog videos, and it's nice because then you can like most of the times they capture their like natural selves. Um. Unlike YouTubers, you know, when we like, when people just like pose for certain things or like set up certain things. But when it's animal videos on YouTube, they're generally um, not staged. So that's a good place to get them. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant because you, you have to do the gesture for standing there long mm-hmm. pose. Yeah, mm-hmm. that. I was looking up light drawn animals. <laughs> yeah. And I, um, when you're drawing, I would suggest to let it play and just keep drawing. Um, and Masse is actually totally right. YouTube, especially if you could get like a locked in angle, that's how I would start it, right? Masse, like I would just want a locked in angle of the animal and just watch it move around and start making like multiple sketches at the same time because as the animal starts to move into one pose you have a vision of it you have a little bit of information for about like three seconds or something or you jot something down and then it goes into another pose and you start building on that sketch and so on and so Mm -hmm. forth yeah later on then pause it, then investigate, then go back to the live thing again. Yeah. Thanks, that's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, oh, you're very welcome. And Tara Whitlatch, look up some of her, you know, get some of her books if you can, um, mm. and get those anatomy, you know, drawings. Have those somewhere available so you can kind of refer to them as you're drawing the animal once you can piece Mm -hmm. those two together then you're onto something huge you know because now you're drawing with the knowledge of the anatomy as well yeah i i like how you brought up tarot because um uh for me because i learned uh animal drawing in uh in sorry uh animal anatomy in school, I understand how certain parts, especially the bones, how they connect because they're so similar to the human body. Um, there's parts like like the leg, flesh, skin, like I understand that it connects, but how does it fold? So looking at Terrell's drawing and see how she draws it has really helped me understand like, oh, this is how she would interpret interpret it or like how she distills that part. and like um, Claire Wendling, how she draws fur for certain parts, like a fluffy mane or like, a, a sh- you know, some ears, like very different from each other. And just breaking that down has helped me with my own animal drawing. So yeah, definitely see, looking at other artist stuff does help um, with their own animal drawings. I drop in another one in there, uh, Bryn Metheny. She's yes. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, good. Uh, and Terrell actually, she teaches on schoolism.com. So if you want to mm-hmm. learn creature anatomy for anybody, uh, you can see on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, it says subscribe, you know, and, and I can't really, s- okay. Subscribe and access, yep. uh, all 35 plus, uh, art courses on schoolism, right? So when you yeah, subscribe, it's like on. Netflix, sorry, mm-hmm. go ahead. You were saying something? I'm, I'm on schoolism so yeah i checked that out oh right on uh, uh, yeah yeah and uh tarot whitlatch's course it's hardcore if you go through that course you you will come out a different person <laughs> <laughs> she yeah, that's a really tough course i can mm-hmm. tell you it's like so much so much uh terms and knowledge a lot of homework yeah but it makes you into a totally different person that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Have you guys that's heard of, um, sorry, I, I was just uh, wanting to include another artist that's really good with um, animal anatomy. Um, mm-hmm. Her name's uh, Christine Beyond Draws. Christine oh. Beyond Draws. I yeah. 
on Instagram. She's uh, an art director at DreamWorks. Cool. Well, it's always oh. it's always awesome to oh to yeah see some new artists. That's and stuff. Great. Cool. Yeah, I'll put this on the screen mm -hmm. here. I like how um like the bones certain parts are more defined but it adds so much to to the to the animal drawing it's awesome oh these yeah, are really awesome. nice shape design yeah very mm -hmm. different yeah Yeah, oh, thanks sweet. for sharing. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, what else? Is... Oh, yes. Hello. Question. I sure. really like when um, artists use splashes of pure color in a piece that you wouldn't think it belongs there, but it fits perfectly. And um, in the past year or so, I work only in black and white, and I would really like an exercise that will help me see it. Boom! It's done! And it's, you know, you can do this one. <laughs> <laughs> because this really, like, oh, this is one of many different exercises that you can do, um, but this one really... As you start changing those hues and saturation, it really kind of teaches you uh, that colors have values and what kind of values do they have. Mm -hmm. Like you don't even have to change your your value scale a lot of times. You can just change your hue and get a darker hue. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a schoolism class that can help with that. Oh. Uh, schoolism class, yeah, there's a bunch. Um, Sam Nielsen's uh, Fundamentals of Light and Color that really gets into scientific stuff about how light works and how colors work and um, puts you through some really great exercises as well to not just understand color and light, but to understand it from a creative way, like you're creating it yourself. Uh, then you also have Tonko House, which mm -hmm. is like they teach you very much like the fundamentals of how it all works and makes it a, a lot more in a practical way of teaching. Like you get out there and you start painting stuff, uh, you know, in life. And then in the end, they bring it into imaginary stuff. And Masay, mm -hmm. if, if I'm missing anything. Just, you know, pile on and just interrupt me, please cut me off. Um, and then the last one is Nathan Fowkes. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Right. He's mm -hmm. all about designing light and color, which is, I feel like you can do them in all sorts of different orders, but that one, I feel like I would want to do that one last almost. I don't know mm -hmm. how you feel, say. Yeah. Um, personally, I haven't taken Sam's class yet, but, um, Tonko House, I took first. That helped me with just understanding how to paint color and light. And then Nathan's is like everything I learned condensed and like made easy to understand and like things click because there's a lot of like things that I learned in the past, which I thought I understood, but then when he explained it, I was like, oh, this is what they meant. <laughs> so yeah, I I, I do like, um, I sorry, I do think that Nathan's class last did help me a lot. I took it yeah. like, I took Sam Nielsen's class first, then I took Nathan's, then I took Tonko House. But after I did it, after I did the Tonko House one, I want to go back to the Nathan one. That's how I felt. Mm. That's why I'm saying this. Mm. Yeah, and it's really I will important. Try them all. Oh, sorry? I said that I will do them all. Oh, okay. nice. Yeah, and that's yeah. good because it's like, you don't want to just stop at one class and think that you learned everything because every teacher teaches different 
uh, ways to approach color and light. So yeah, it's really awesome. So Slido is kind of um, piling up with a bunch of questions. Let's go to one of those. Okay, so Anonymous yeah. says, I was thinking of spending three days in one challenge, in one of the challenges. Uh, so, you know, like 30 minutes per day on each image before switching. What do you think? What do you think, Missy? Um, let Oh, so all the challenges that we've done? Oh, no, no. This person's just saying instead of doing 90 minutes straight, maybe over mm -hmm. three days. Mm. Yeah, okay. I think that's, yeah, I think that's a good idea. You know, do stuff that's doable for you. Do stuff that mm -hmm. you can continue on and keep it going. I think that's yeah. like the key there. Yeah. But if you can um, do more, do more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think these challenges aren't necessarily restricted to 90 minutes. You can do it over 90 minutes, under, like, yeah, 30 minutes, if depending on your schedule. I think there's still benefits of just doing that um, in those three days. Sometimes you'll be finished early. You know, mm -hmm. like we were doing a challenge the other day where we kind of finished early and we kind of like, we're just noodling around for the last <laughs> like, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And we still finished early. Um, yeah. But we were just talking about this, like, yeah, we could have switched it up. We could have changed things. We could have added stuff to the to the image. Mm -hmm. You know, you could keep going or you could finish early. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no there's no strict rules on this, but at the same time, I kind of feel like it is good for you to kind of put some rules on yourself, whatever those yeah. are. Mm -hmm. You know, it really depends on your skill level, your your situation, how much time you yeah. can spend. Yeah. Um, for me, the 90 minutes is nice because uh, I guess it's not too short to the point where I'm missing certain parts of our specific study reference but it's not too long to the point where yeah it's like we just start noodling around and it's like we're yeah it you know um you're you're pretty much like finished the study so i i, I do like the 90 minute challenge and look how your study is going compared to mine like <laughs> there's so much there 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 was a point when the eyes were so like the white white part of the eyes were so bright but i'm glad that um now that i'm looking at our video i i put like a darker value that cheek definitely seemed to give some problems some challenges oh her her right cheek just the cheeks in general because like, <laughs> right yeah because it's got like a a subtle blush there's too blush many subtleties yeah there's too many yeah. subtleties i do like your your cheek though because it's like you know those um those filters when it's like oh yeah it's like gradual mm -hmm. where it gets like warmer and warmer as it gets darker it wasn't a conscious like thought but I guess like the subconscious me was trying to make it easier on myself <laughs> I kind of feel like that but this was tough and so far you know it's been almost uh closing in on an hour anyways about 50 mm -hmm. minutes so far has passed um and that's all that I got down you know which makes this exercise right here you know extra extra hard Hooray! yay <laughs> <laughs> anyhow level seven level seven boom it's pretty good <laughs> it's like we're we're beating these uh these monsters or these bosses that yes. are like levels yes
and we keep leveling up. <laughs> it'll be fun. It'll be fun. We'll, you know, we'll give each one a different grade. And then when people start it, they could be like, oh, dang. All right. I'm getting ready for this one. Or maybe it's like a low number. You're like, all right. I'm just cruising today. I'm just yeah. cruising. This be great. Yeah. If it's like a higher monster, it's like, oh, I got to train a bit more before I tackle this monster. <laughs> Uh, why don't we go to another question in Slido and then we could hop over to Discord. So Slido, uh, did you use brace and bands while, while you were drawing after the injury? I'm, I'm thinking of using a wristband, but I read that can make the pain worse. Mm, because it's kind of like compensating or not compensating. Um... What's that word? I think for I guess it's kind term. of short term is yeah. okay, but you can't think of that's how life is going to be. And mm. I think it really makes it worse when you feel like, okay, yeah, my arm hurts. I'm going to get this brace and I'm going to keep doing exactly what I'm doing. Because you're <laughs> what you're doing right now has gotten you to the point where you need a brace. Mm. You know, so you got to change mm. something. Um, which kind of goes back mm. to yoga, you know, YouTube yoga. That's what I do. Yeah. Simple, free. Just do it in the morning, whatever, hopefully. <laughs> is it a wrist injury? This one, this person is saying it's... a wrist injury. Um, yeah, it seems like a wrist But something that I, you know, learned was that just because a wrist hurts in that same place as somebody else doesn't mean that it's because of the same reasons. Mm -hmm. Everything's tied together, really. Yeah. Yeah. It might be a different part of your body that's causing the issue. Oh, yeah. My latest one. Uh, this one is crazy. So it feels like my skull is like shrinking or the skin that the the fascia that goes over top of my skull that kind of surrounds the thin muscles and such it's like yeah. shrinking in the back of my head when i when i strain so like if i uh, yeah yeah like your scalp is pulling back yeah that really sucks i went to a physio yesterday and he was like Oh yeah, uh, I could see, I could see that happening. <laughs> Let me try to fix it. It's still kind of, I still get mm. it a little bit right now. Dang, that's scary. It's weird. Uh huh. <laughs> but yeah, the the whole wristband thing. It's if it's necessary, I feel like, um, I guess, it's better than to feel the pain. But it's kind of just like putting a band-aid like slapping a band-aid and like ch trying to forget about it but it's getting worse and worse so yeah get you gotta the... do exercises mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stretches exercises like farmer carries do you know what that is i don't know but, but i think the main thing is like you just can't go back to those same habits right mm -hmm. you can't just get the brace and then do the same stuff there's like i was saying there's many different reasons for these kind of things to happen so it really takes some investigating everybody always asks me for advice and the best advice is is to actually investigate um, many different you know ways of kind of helping as well kind of investigate them all to have the best options to yeah. choose from that's true take care of your body everyone <laughs> Yeah, but what was that thing that um, I think it was Peter you mentioned just now? Who was that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, farmer carries. Yeah, what is that? Um, basically, so it's just like carrying uh, like a uh, a kettle, um, kettle weight bell. or kettlebell, yeah, or um, dumbbell. Um, you know, something really heavy and basically just walking with it. And like, and it's good to have one, um, you know, carrying one at a time, not both, because 
if it's just on one side, you're using your whole other side of your body to like compensate. Okay, and are you uh just to make sure? Are you a are you a professional kind of physician kind of person? No, I have friends that are. Okay, so just to make sure, I want to give everybody. I always kind of say, okay, this is like a Bobby fact. In this yeah. case, this is a Peter fact. All right, so Brain definitely do your research. We are artists. <laughs> okay, why don't we move on to another question here? Um, Whitley says, "Hey, Bobby, I prefer traditional drawing and painting, and feel pressure to adapt to digital." How do you transfer scan traditional art to digital solution? Um, well, my course on schoolism is perfect for people that want to make that change, actually, because the way that I approach digital painting is very much like traditional painting um, mm -hmm. in many, many ways. So that's one. But at the same time, like, you don't absolutely need to switch over to digital. It's good. I think it's mm -hmm. really, really beneficial, you know, but you don't necessarily have to. Right, Masay? Yeah. Yeah, I think it um, also depends on which industry or what kind of job you want to take because um, I, I know a lot of uh, illustrators, like book illustration people who do only traditional and then they scan their work and then obviously they sometimes tweak it in Photoshop, but you know, they're, they're pure traditional. So, um, yeah, there's that, uh, shoot, what's his name? Um, he does magic cards and he does all of his, yes, oh. yes I yeah. think he, he does everything traditional or at least his, ma uh, magic cards traditional. Um, so yeah. I guess it depends on what kind of industry you want to get into. Yeah, Donato Giannicola, he's also a traditional. Um, Marie Alice Harrell, uh, mm -hmm. children's book illustrator, she's traditional. Mm -hmm. Kim Jong Gi and Claire Wendling, and there's lots. Yeah, there's lots. Yeah, yeah. But um, I guess how to. Yeah, Bob, I, I learned from Bobby how to, how to digital paint because <laughs> if you look at my old stuff, it's all just like flat, flat colors. Um, so that helped me a lot. Well, yeah, the, you know, the, and the course on schoolism, it's a nine, nine lesson course, uh, takes about nine weeks. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I gotta toot my own horn. It is good. It works. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, uh, mm -hmm. so try it out. All right, why don't we go on to another topic here, now that I sold Hello, myself Hello, Bobby, so, can, so you, can you hear me? Hello, yes. <laughs> How are you? Good, who is this? Where are you from? I'm Simon from Colombia. Amazing, Hello. awesome. Hello, Simon. I wanted to ask you for an advice to someone who is starting in the industry. For example, I have just graduated from my career and I am about to do my professional internship on art, on concept art. I have, a, I have a, already a portfolio, but it feels like very difficult to connect because, for example, the art station jobs are very top, are very complex to connect, especially when you are starting. So uh, I would like to hear an advice from where to search, for example, to have uh, like this first job or, or something that it's not that specialized. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, how do you feel about showing your artwork right now? Do you want mm. to put on screen and that would give me okay. a better idea? <laughs> Well, I am. I am very totally fine with no that. No pressure. No oh. pressure. If you don't, if you feel funny, you know, like no. we can go on and just pretend 
I didn't say anything. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so is this art station, I, Instagram? Where are we going here? Yeah, art station, actually. I, I've just uh, sent the link in the Discord chat. I don't know if, if, if it's okay. In the Discord chat. Got it. Okay. Go in there now. By the way, Masse, your piece is looking really cool. There's so many blank uh, spaces on mine still. Thanks. So Discord yeah. chat or like share links area or where you where did you put it? Hmm. I on the um, show links live chat. Okay, I can uh, send the link on the live chat. I don't know. That'd be good. A okay. little bit long. All right. Well, we're going to keep going uh, as Simon figures out the link to put in. And uh, let's go to question and slide them. So Vivek. Hey, Vivek. So Vivek says, can I try this 90-minute uh, challenge daily when I am still studying fundamentals? Will it help me improve um, in my understanding of fundamentals? Totally. Right, Masse? Yeah, whatever you're learning in your fundamentals, you can try to apply it to the to whichever um, reference that you're using in the 90 minute challenge. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think I think that's a good okay. idea. This is kind of like the gym, you know, is <laughs> I, I'm skinny, I'm scrawny. Can I still go to the gym? Heck yeah, you can. You know, you're extremely overweight. Heck yeah, you can. There's no, you know, there's no right time. Now is the best time. And be ready for this frustration, right? Mm -hmm. Be ready for the struggle and be ready to love it. Accept this ugly child into your life and love it. You know, that's how I think about struggles <laughs> and frustrations. Like, yes. Yeah. It's not the best looking thing in the world, but it's mine. It's my yeah. struggle. It's my frustration. So I will love That's it right. just the same. You know, and if you could do yeah. that, then you're going to come back for more. And then every time yeah. you come back for more, you're going to get better. That's true. <laughs> you, you put it perfectly. And get a workout, buddy. Like I got Masse here. Get your own yeah. workout, buddy do the this with them because mm -hmm. that's how you're going to stay on top of things and keep it going mm -hmm. yeah. i know on discord um people hang out and do the challenges or like they do their own work or you know do different studies so i think it's a great place to get a work workout buddy yeah can we have a workout challenge 90 minute workout that's nice <laughs> Bobby, I sent a link in the... I saw it. Uh, I saw it. Thank uh, you. Yeah, nice. I'm going to put that up right now. All right. This is Simon from Colombia. Oh, okay, nice. All right. Kind of yeah, you're, yeah, you know, this is, you're doing okay, Simon. You're doing okay. <laughs> I think there's just like some um, bits and pieces where I feel like... Well, do you have some advice that you want to say first, Masay? I feel like I'm always saying stuff. No, no, no. no. I, 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 I want to hear. But okay. Heard. What I'd say is right. get some of the artwork from the things that you think you are headed towards and put it right beside. Does it fit? If it doesn't fit yet, keep going. And that's how okay. you're gonna get to that next level because like there's some nice things happening here but if you put this up beside say like um esther Wu or something and her mech drawings and stuff you would be like okay it's missing details it's missing little tiny bits and pieces um it's it needs better joints because you can see these joints they're on different angles so it doesn't make as much sense. These structures start to 
change, right? You can see like this little bit um, right in front of the foot lines up to this shaft thing going into the kind of knee of this creature, or this uh, robot thing. But then over here, this little bit is like right beside, right? So you're gonna want to get your structure nice and tight and yeah, get get some reference, put it right beside your stuff. Because you are you are on your way, Simon. Like I I don't think you're wasting your time at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? I really um, appreciate that. Yeah, my pleasure. Like you got a lot of really nice little details here, but then you see how clean and just it almost looks like animated like for an animated 2d cartoon up here and then more for like a game or something down here they're two different styles almost mm -hmm. okay right and it's funny because like where would your attention go your attention would stay on the top here so what you need to figure out is what other kind of stuff can i add on here right perhaps okay. it's you have textures here, um, these linear textures, right? You're drawing in textures, yet you have no textures on any of this other stuff. That could be the details that you could add on here. You know, you could add on certain parts of how this thing is put together. Are there any, any seam lines on this? Are there any nuts and bolts that put this thing together besides two in the front here? Um, yeah, that's that's just stuff off the top of my head. Okay, I, I really appreciate. It. Would you think that it's more important to like make the portfolio uh, focused on one specific uh, topic, like for example, just characters or just vehicles? Because it feels for someone who's starting that I, I think that it's valuable to show that I am versatile. <laughs> so, like, I can do a lot of things because I yet not really great on a single specific task. I don't... Let me let me turn it around and I'll tell you what it sounds like from the owner. Okay, so okay. I'm looking at portfolios and I'm looking for an artist to hire. I need a robot artist and I see your portfolio and you have some nice robots, really nice robots and you have some puppy dogs, and you have some uh, graphic design, and then you have some environments, and then you have some uh, ninja warriors, okay? And your robots were great. On a scale of one to 10, they are eight, or whatever. And then I go to Massey's por portfolio, and it's nothing but robots. If there were puppy dogs, they're robot puppy dogs, right? If they're environments, it's like this crazy mech environment. Who would I hire for the robot position? It would be Mercedes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Unless I am looking for somebody where it's like, maybe I have a smaller studio and then I see your portfolio. I'm like, oh, this person does everything. Great. I don't really know what I'm hiring for. I need to just build a team and have it be flexible. Well, then, great. I want the person that draws the puppy dogs and robots and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, so generally what I would say is in your website that's like home base that's where you put everything and you put everything nicely categorized hopefully or sectioned off you know in a certain order hopefully uh, if you have a bunch of different topics and then if you get a job or you apply for a job you get very specific and you send them a specific portfolio mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Bobby. Yeah, you're welcome. That's totally like, it's great because like, I am put in this position where I have to do both, right? Like I have to put together my portfolio sometimes. Well, not, not too much anymore, which is nice. <laughs> but before I would, and I also have to look at portfolios. I also, you know, Miss A, as well, she's looked at people's portfolios. She's built a team, you know. So, Miss A, you could probably talk about this as well, right? 
Um, yeah, uh, I guess in a portfolio, um, like, like Bobby said, if you have a website, that's kind of where you want to put where you could put everything. But when I see a portfolio, and when I'm searching for a specific artist for the project that I'm um, working on, um, if I do see something where it's not their best piece, it kind of makes me wonder like, oh, is this how they're going to perform on this certain project? And it makes me feel uneasy about them. And that's kind of where I'm like, okay, maybe this is a pass. So um, portfolio is definitely best piece, best foot forward. Uh, don't put anything where you, where yourself, where sorry, where even you yourself is doubting that piece because people who are looking at your portfolio, they're gonna be able to tell right away. Um, uh, yeah. This but then question. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, so there is a fine line where usually when you do something, people think it's good, but you don't like it. Mm. Um, and it could be like your best work for a lot of people, but you look at it and you say, nah, this is trash. Bobby Chu can do something better. Um, how do you measure the weight of your own criticism and what would really get you a job, but you're just being too mean on yourself. Mm. Do you want to go first? I don't know say? if that was clear. No, <laughs> that's a first. really good question. It can't be a straightforward answer because there's some people that are delusional and they think that they're amazing and they stink. Let's just be real. And then there's other people like Claire Wendling comes to mind. I'm looking at her amazing sketchbook, her amazing drawings, masterful. I'm going, wow. And she's going, oh, she's like practically choking, you know, going, oh, I hate that. Or none of these look good. Or Craig Mullins, when I asked him, what was, what's your favorite painting you've ever done? And he's like, chuckles. And he's like, they all tie for last. I was like, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Masay, you want to add anything to this little conversation? Here? Um, yeah, I think, I guess it's just important. I mean, if you think about, if you think about that, about one of your pieces, even though everyone else thinks it's great, that's, that's a good sign. That just means that like, you know, that you have to make a better piece. Yes. Uh, yeah, and the next time you you make it, and then you just get better and better. And obviously, you want to like replace old portfolio pieces with more current one, because uh, even even though I do, I have some pieces where I really like from years before. I know that I should be updating it to something that's more current. You know, the other thing is is that. People love to give their opinions, love to give their opinions. So, <laughs> you know, ask your the artists around you that are kind of like at the highest skill level that you think and tell them not what do you think of this art, but what do you think I can do better? Because who cares where, what level we're at right now? Any of us, really. It, I think the more important thing is like, well, where are you going to be compared to now, a year from now? Are you going to be in the same place? Or are you going to be slightly lower because you, you, you slacked off and you got rusty? Or are you going to be at a higher place? Because that's the thing, you know? That's the thing that we really need to uh, keep an eye on. Because if we keep an mm -hmm. eye on that, as opposed to whether or not this art is good or not, we will get to that level no matter what we'll get to that really good level where we're like yeah this is great or mm -hmm. other people are like this is great yeah oh so the key is the question what can i do better and not do you like my art yeah i i really think so like i, I if you if your whole entire goal is like what can i do better what can i learn next think about that you know how fast you would grow, how powerful your your skills will get, how like sharpened your skills will get. Because as you start learning one thing, 
that will relate to another thing that you learned almost guaranteed and then all of a sudden you bridge those two pieces of knowledge and maybe a third new piece of knowledge is born because of that you know that happens lots which is a beautiful thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. that's why we <laughs> do these challenges idea. that's why miss keep and i we keep doing these challenges and doing them differently we're not just painting and drawing the same kind of stuff in the same kind of way over and over again mm -hmm. And it's really like, for reals, for reals, this to me is not entertainment. You know, hopefully everybody's entertained, but th that's a secondary objective. You can see in like previous um, 90 minute workouts where I paint the same painting again. Mm. You know, if this was entertainment, I would switch it up every time. But, mm -hmm. right, those earlier ones, I did that because I want to show people, this is what I do, right? unsubscribe if you think this is boring but you know what <laughs> if you if you want to get better at art the one of the best things you could do is love the boring stuff appreciate the boring stuff yeah i guess i shall go back to boxes <laughs> hey boxes are beautiful they're great <laughs> yeah i'm a very you know, like when I was in school, I remember drawing boxes for months, for months. Figure drawing, I would just draw boxes. Mm -hmm. But then one day the boxes started to look really, really cool. The way that you'd stack them and then, you know, put them in a pose. And you're like, that's a good box person. Yeah. It yeah. really flows. You Finding think? the little joy. You did those exercises too, right, Masay, in, in uh, life drawing boxes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, lots and lots of boxes. The pelvis box, the rib box, head box. But it all makes sense now. <laughs> what was some of the best uh, exercises that you did, besides boxes, because we already talked about that, mm -hmm. like when you were in school, when you were beginning? Mm hmm oh gesture drawing being quick and trying to like put down your thoughts because uh i remember before when i was um before college i guess mainly high school i would just be drawing so slow every single detail all at once section by section um so even though i really hated it hated gesture drawing in life life drawing class um i see that you know it adds more life it adds more uh, motion into the drawing. So I think that was the most fun, hard, but fun. Man, I loved college. When I was in college, those are some of my best, most favorite times. <laughs> yeah. It's the friends that made it worth it. Yeah, and just the struggle. I don't know, I guess I'm weird, but like the struggle is one of my favorite things about that time. It's like, I didn't know anything and I'm just trying, I'm trying to figure it all out and yeah. we're all trying to figure it out. And that struggle is like what I really loved about college and we all struggle together. Mm. You know, it's it like us right now. It was what? We're struggling, like us right now. Oh yeah. We're struggling. But it was this wonderful struggle where I felt like our year especially had very little secrets. You know, like you figure something out, you're going to tell everybody. That's how mm -hmm. I felt we were. Mm -hmm. And not every year was like that. Yeah. It is very competitive now. Yeah, which like is like, don't. you know... What's that saying? You want to go fast, you go alone. You want to go far, you go with a group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, sharing, doing this, sharing what I know with you, Masse, and you sharing what you know with me, you know, it's like, it's been very beneficial. Mm -hmm. Anyways, everybody knows that stuff. Share. <laughs> 
Sharing is caring. Sharing Can I is add something to this? I'm sorry to interrupt. Sure. Um. Yeah. So, I I used to like share what I know, like you know, like you 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 um know something and then you tell everyone and then um it's like we we share um with everyone mm -hmm. but then um you will realize that um there is always somebody that they are that they are jealous about you and then they spread some um, strange rumors and then people will believe into the rumors then um, believing that you are actually sharing the good information with them, and then people start to like um, avoiding you. Like I was, I I I had this um, case, so mm -hmm. I like although it happened to me during um, during my high school, but I still doing the same thing even in my college. Well, and also, yeah, maybe I um, could, let me just stop you right there, Wina. Um, yeah. You know, that's a really good kind of point to bring up, which a lot of people, they could relate to that. You know, you don't have to share every single thing that you know right away either. You know, you could let things marinate a little bit. Also, it could be in the way that you're sharing things because it's kind of like uh the smell of cheese and the smell of feet they're very similar and it's like a complete night and day difference you know sometimes when we explain things it sounds like we're preaching and i feel like i'm preaching a lot of times too so i'm, I'm really kind of like i try to be cognizant of that i just try to tell you know tell people things from my perspective and things that have worked for me but it's definitely not the be all end all of how to do things um, mm -hmm. and sometimes when people try to explain stuff to me in a very kind of strong way I'm not saying that you did it that way but yeah um, you know there's there's ways of kind of sharing which people connect and then other ways where people share and you don't connect at all I think the biggest thing for me is I just try not to actually tell people how to do anything unless it's in a place where that's what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to share, or if they mm. ask. Otherwise, I'm keeping my mouth shut, you know, because mm. I don't want to be that person. You know what I mean? And maybe that comes from some other scar from, you know, you're saying in high school, maybe in college, maybe that comes from some sort of scar from me in like high school or college or something. I don't know. But that's just, that's how I feel nowadays. Hmm. Yeah. You know uh, what it is? Actually, I just want to share something on the same topic. Oh, yeah. Is, okay, sure. Uh, uh, I usually meet up with a lot of artists and we share information, try to help each other. And whenever I want to help somebody, I try to imagine myself explaining to my little self. So when I talk to myself from eight years ago, I try mm -hmm. to say it in a manner that I wouldn't hurt myself. Mm -hmm. So that helps me yeah. help people. That could be very helpful. And I, I'll give you one more step on that. Um, try to imagine that you are them, not yourself, mm -hmm. but you are them. Because like for me, uh, I like, I know, I like it tough. I like it when people <laughs> push me and go, you can't do this. You know, I thrive on that kind of stuff. I love that shit uh, because I like challenges, I guess. I don't know. But then there's lots of people where they don't thrive on that. And they thrive mm -hmm. on, you gave them a little encouragement. Yeah, that looks like it could be, you know, you're, you could be on to the right direction. I'd love to see this in two weeks. You know, something mm -hmm. like that. So it's like, you got to, I feel like it's not like do on to others how you would want it done to you. But it's almost like, do on to others how you feel that they would want it done to them as long as it's not hurting nobody 
<laughs> I think that should be the saying, but it's kind of long. Yeah. <laughs> I had uh, something else. Yeah, sure. Um, I just think it's really important to like take the time to to really listen and understand, you know, before trying to offer advice. Hundred um, percent. Yeah. Often, what I find is like a thing is like. For me, if I'm like showing my work to somebody, you know, one piece, I might have not gotten something right, you know, in that piece, but then in other pieces, I really, you know, got them right. Or maybe, you know, it was an older piece or something like that. And somebody jumps on it thinking that, you know, oh, I know, you know, I know exactly uh, how to empathize and they have a, you know, a false impression basically. So then they really want to help based on what, you know, the one thing they saw was. Well, yeah, and nobody's going to, you know, it's like you say something, that doesn't mean that it's going to change that person's mind. That doesn't mean that they're going to accept it. And I wouldn't accept anything if I didn't feel like you totally understood where I was coming from. Right. Right on. So <laughs> now look at our paintings, Masse. They look drastically different. Drastically. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, we're getting close to the end, right? I think this is when I started like blotching in other colors to, uh, I guess, blend the, the values in together. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of fun. A it's like in the forehead, you can see like a bit of orange, green and blue. I think yeah. that's when I started like dotting the different colors, but trying to find the same value. Definitely. Your way is definitely more challenging. Um, but I still learned a bunch. <laughs> but yeah, maybe <laughs> next time I, I'll try your way. That's like literally like little blotches everywhere. It's almost like um, like a mosaic. Yeah. Wow, they're really good questions and topics today. Mm -hmm. I don't know every I... week, or every... Sorry, I was just gonna say, every week feels different, so it's nice. Yeah, uh, and next week, it's gonna be, or next stream, that's gonna be Monday, right? Mm -hmm. Every Tuesday, or every Thursdays and Mondays, everybody, Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah, somebody was saying that, um, you know what, I, I think I just, I spent too much of my time trying to get proportions exact, right? And like the details in the exact place, uh, which mm -hmm. still it wasn't, but yeah, I think next time I would want to concentrate much more on like keeping it more randomized, like how you're doing. Mm -hmm. I I remember from last stream, I guess Monday, when Wilder joined us, and he brought up the story about how someone got upset because the painting didn't look exactly like the reference. Um, that kind of like helped me take this weight off my shoulder um, for for the you know the next couple of uh, studies that we're doing. That you know it doesn't necessarily need to look like the reference but um you know get it's trying to get that message that you want in that certain piece across and that's like i guess for this one i wanted to capture the the value with the different colors and uh even though it doesn't look exactly like her i think i was able to achieve that what i wanted hey that's fantastic that's like uh yeah Sounds about right. Now we only have about um, just a few minutes here. So definitely kind of think about any kind of loose spaces or things that you want to complete, things that you want to add before the end of this painting. Sometimes it's just good to just switch over and add it. You know what I mean, Missy? Like some, uh, so many times I'll see stuff. I'll be like, okay, I need to add that. And then it's yeah. hard for me to stop whatever it is I'm painting right now and go to add it. <laughs> yeah. 
You know what like I mean? Last Am I making sense here? Uh huh. Kind of. It, <laughs> but it, it. Oh, sorry. No, I, I was saying like what we say says like um, everybody has their own uh, version of it. Like in Discord, you see right now is everybody make their own uh, version of the same drawing, and it's it's really cool to see. Uh, yeah, Let's and I I'm really out. fan of. Uh, I think it's Laura. I'm not sure your name, but it uh, oh. looks really cool. Mm -hmm. so. Wow, look at all the yeah. projects going on. I love it. Yeah. Laura, I love Laura. the variety. That's fantastic. That's really, mm -hmm. well really, really well done. There's a lot of really well done ones. Mm -hmm. Very nice. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, why don't we go to a couple more questions and uh, we'll finish this up. Okay, Sounds so good. Hassan says, I've always had I've always had difficulty selecting the base color, then choosing light color and then find how light color, sorry, and then find how the light color is going to change the base color. Okay, so I think uh, just kind of paraphrasing, it's like I always have trouble finding that base color. And then I have trouble finding the color that I should use for the light. Mm, to put on the base color. Yes. Mm. You want to go first? No, I always go first. You go first. No. You want me to go first? All right, all right. So, you go first. Um, oh. Yeah, the base color generally, I, I feel like I'm right there with you, Hassan. I've had that issue in the very beginning, and something that really clued in for me was if you're only using flat tones and you're putting it down the base colors, could you put it down in a way where it feels like um, all those colors work together well. It's not too contrasting. It's not too garish. You know, it, they flow together. And um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So it could be on a cloudy day. It could be on a sunny day right away. It could be on, um, you know, it's all like with a bluish hue and dark, like nighttime. For me, it doesn't really matter because I'm really going after the ambient or the the base color plus the ambient light, mm -hmm. right? Um, or you could just do everything kind of like like Tonko House style. You kind of look at everything like it was like on a cloudy day, but you're only using flat tones and then from there you start to convert you start to alter um yeah do you want to add to that missy um i yeah i think the tonko house helped me learn how to you know using the ambient lighting like when it's like overcast and understanding that base color and then adding the photoshop filters but after a while i've been able to paint without too many of those like extra fancy adjustment layers um but what's helped me uh with that whole like finding the base color and then finding the, the light color um photo references throwing them into photoshop and then color picking to see how they're how they change has helped me understand like it's like oh this is the base color and then if i want a cooler lighting it's like how does the how does everything change like the value and the hue saturation um just seeing that relationship um i guess doing studies like this has helped um me remember like remember those things so you know photo references would be a great place to kind of learn from wonderful yeah. well <laughs> there it is there's the full image everybody yeah 90 minutes only 
very much concentrating on the value of things. And the challenge for us was to constantly change the hue, constantly change the saturation, and somehow make it work, somehow make it believable. And here's the final challenge. After you do it like this, you don't have to. You could just paint hers just straight. But if you do decide to do the same <laughs> challenge as us, next thing to do is put in black and white. See Ooh. how you did. Oh, um, I made it really light. <laughs> well, <laughs> you did it in a very challenging way. So, and look at my shapes. They're a lot more clean. Like, um, you know what I mean? Like, there's less of them. <laughs> so it's a little easier for me, right? You're choosing all sorts of colors. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that, that was challenging. All right, everybody. Well, thank you to everybody that tuned in. I want to thank the audience. I want to thank the wonderful people in Discord, Patricia that runs the Discord channel yeah. and all the helpers that help with the Discord channel, with the LBX Discord channel. Join mm -hmm. up. The, the descriptions are, or the link is in the descriptions. I also want to give a big shout out to Jamie, my assistant. Uh, she's hey. always been there every week. And the so biggest amazing. shout out goes to my co-host Masay. Thank you so much, Masay, for my helping pleasure. me and yeah, doing these streams with me. Monday, come back. We're doing it again. Keep on it. Stay artistically fit and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everyone.